it's Lee from Colouring Queen.net and I'm back today colouring for my colour along for April which is Alice in April 2022. So today I thought I would colour the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland and the picture is from Mrs Peggotty Arts. I'll leave a link to their shop below. I printed this picture out on Express Blend It card and I'm colouring it today with my Copic markers and I printed it two to a page so they're like A5 size so smaller than A4 because I really wanted to get it done quickly <laughs> and I'm using my Copics for the same reason and I've been really giving them a thrashing this month even though I often don't use them I've found that some have dried up and I'll need to get some replacements soon but silly I forgot to set aside the ones that have dried up and now they're all mixed in together and I don't know which ones need more ink in them and which don't but I guess that's going to be a little project to work out. So today for the cat for the crime segment of this channel I thought we'd have some very low-key cute crimes that involve cats. Now one of the crimes isn't cute and it's a bit gruesome but it's the last one and I'll give you a warning beforehand. But without further ado let's talk about how cats find themselves mixed up in crime. So the first kitty well, I want to tell you about is Leo. Now he's a Bengal cat and they are absolutely gorgeous. Google what one of them look like, they are absolutely stunning. Now he was just three years old and he managed to be a bit of a hero because he fought off a cat burglar. That's right, cat versus cat burglar, cat one, cat burglar zero. So his humans, Sue and John Higgins, lived with Leo in Milton Mount Avenue in Crawley in Sussex in the UK. And they'd gone to bed for the night. It was just before Christmas. But not Leo. He, he was in bed, but he, in his own little room and having a little bit of a cat nap. And Leo soon realised that someone was trying to open the window of the downstairs part of the home where Leo slept. Now the intruder made their way through the window and they spent some time looking around for things in the downstairs living area, seeing the Christmas tree there, lots of Christmas presents underneath, before they tried their luck upstairs to where the humans were sleeping. But while they were making their way around and looking for things to steal in the home, they woke up Leo and Leo was not happy to be interrupted from his dreams and so he quickly jumped up to attention. Now the intruder didn't know what hit them when Leo came flying through his cat flap which was usually not used by him of an evening and usually the door that the cat flap was in was actually closed until the morning when Leo waited for his staff to bring him in his breakfast. But Leo noticed that intruder and he knew that wasn't a member of his staff and so he immediately started meowing and he meowed so much that the intruder backtracked down the stairs and left via the window that they'd opened. Now Mrs Higgins, Leo's owner, she woke up and Leo was on her bed at five o'clock in the morning meowing and she knew something was wrong because Leo always stayed downstairs of an evening and he was in his room always until his staff came and brought him in his breakfast. So she knew something was up so her and her husband got up and they went downstairs and took a peek and tried to work out why Leo was behaving oddly this morning and why he'd jumped into their bed so early. And they quickly realised when they were going around their home that the back window had been actually chiselled open. So the police were called, but by then the cat burglar had already escaped. But Leo's actions didn't go unnoticed. 
and he was actually nominated for his bravery. He was named a finalist in the Hero Cat category of the Cat Protection UK 2012 National Cat Awards. And that takes place at the Savoy Hunt Hotel in London. Now, I don't know what they win. A lifetime supply of whiskers or cat food. I don't know. Very fancy at the Savoy. But unfortunately, Leo didn't win. But his owners are still very happy with their guard cat. And I'm sure he got spoilt that night. So no news if they ever did catch the cat burglar though. But good for Leo. And while some cats are like Leo, they're their own law enforcement organisation, there are a ton of other cats that have, have a life of crime as cat burglars. One of the most well-known cat burglars is Klepto Kitty. And his real name is Dusty. Dusty's a snowshoe cat and he was born in 2006 and he's a bit of a cutie. He was adopted from the Peninsula Humane Society by the Coleman family and they became his staff. And when he's not being featured on TV like Animal Planet or their episode of Must Love Cats or The Letterman Show or local news shows, he enjoys spending his evenings going out being a cat burglar. <laughs> so the first couple of years when he was adopted, Dusty behaved like a normal kitty cat. But by 2008, he was spending his evenings roaming around the neighborhood of San Mateo in California, basically looking for items to snatch and grab in people's gardens or outside their homes, and he would bring them home. And some of the items that he'd pilfered were wash mitts, towels, shoes, socks, gloves, rubber toys, a safety mask, all up over 600 items. So imagine if he was a person, the back, the garage sales that he could have had. But thanks to the wonders of camera surveillance, Dusty had been caught in the act <laughs> carrying items home. So. One night he actually wandered back with a bra and one night he took a tennis shoe and then he went back for the other matching tennis shoe the next night. And one night he even managed to bring home 11 things just in the one evening. And he actually has a Facebook page and that's where he shows off his latest stolen goods. And I guess it's also a good way of the neighbours to find out uh, if he might have pilfered some of their stuff and so they can reclaim it. Now, they actually got a cat behaviour consultant to analyse his behaviour and they think he's got some sort of cat obsessive compulsive disorder, but other people say that it's just like a misdirected predatory instinct. So instead of hunting for animals, he's hunting for items. Who knows? <laughs> but there's quite a few cat burglars out there. Now another cat burglar is Oscar. Now Oscar is a UK cat and Peter Wisemantle and his wife Bridget of Portswood, Southampton in England fell in love with Oscar when they seen him at the Southampton Cats Protection Shelter and they were having a special drive to adopt or foster cats out uh, just before Christmas one year and Oscar was one of those kitties in the shelter waiting for a new home and at that time he was 13 years old so soon after he moved in with the wise mantles the neighbors started to miss some items underwear knee pads a paint roller socks gardening gloves you name it it was gone after Oscar moved into the hood. And the wise mantles noticed too that Oscar was bringing them a lot of gifts with a particular preference for ladies' underwear. And it was so much that they estimated he was committing 10 robberies a day. So they did what good parents do. They dobbed their cat into the police as they were sure other people might be wondering about the stolen items. and maybe even thinking that there was someone up to no good stealing ladies' underwear because he really likes 
ladies underwear that was like his big thing <laughs> and so even though Oscar loves his life of crime his parents understood that he was just trying to bring them presents probably as a gift for giving him a home his kleptomania didn't deter them from adopting Oscar either and I don't know whether they've been able to rehabilitate him but I'm pretty sure he's well loved because they thought he was pretty cute before he did these things and now they just find that even more endearing but there are so many cats that are little cat burglars I I know one of my dogs used to love to steal things and he had quite a collection and I also had a cat that used to like to pilfer underwear and take it back but they all seem to like socks like most of these klepto cats I've looked at love socks so if you're missing your socks maybe go and talk to the neighborhood cats maybe that's where all those missing socks go that you can never find in the wash but if they're not stopping burglars in their tracks or being cat burglars themselves cats can also help solve some crimes as well now this is the last little crime i'm going to talk about today and this one is a little gruesome compared to what we normally talk about on this channel so if you want to say goodbye now please wave goodbye because this one will be talking about the murder of somebody now i won't go into graphic details or all the details of it but it does involve the murder of a person so if you don't want to hear this i shall see you next time and if you're still here, let's talk about a cat that solved a crime. So on the 3rd of July 2012, a group of students were enjoying a day out at the beach in South Sea, England. And they were overseas students, so they were enjoying the summer's day and a very English outing of going to the seaside. And the students discovered a torso that was wrapped in a pink shower curtain and then it was placed inside a black plastic bin liner or a garbage bag as we might call it in Australia. They quickly alerted the police and it must have been absolutely horrific for them enjoying this day out in a country that they're not overly familiar with and making this discovery. So the police obviously attended the crime scene or the disposal site and a few days later a pair of legs washed up on the beach and then a pelvis now all these different parts were part of the one body but the rest of the body was never recovered the body was ultimately identified as David Guy who was 30 years old and the police soon sprang into action to try and find out who was responsible for ending his life and disposing of his body. They were lucky because a number of witnesses came forward and they gave them information that would assist their inquiries. Many had noticed a man on a bike near the site where the remains had been recovered there was actually two different disposal sites but they were within a similar distance to one another and people were able to give the police a name of this man that they had seen and he was local to the area and they immediately told him it was David Hilda a local scrap metal dealer now an investigation team was soon formed and they started by searching David Hilda's home they were of course looking for a link between him and the victim and the crime scene or crime scenes of David Guy. Blood was found in David Hilda's flat and that was a match for David Guy. Fibres were found in his home and they were matched to the shower curtain that had been used to wrap the corpse or the torso. And something else was found as well, cat hairs. On the shower curtain, police discovered eight cat hairs. 
then David Hilda had a cat called Tinker. Now the hairs were sent to the US for analysis and they were compared to 493 American cats but the samples didn't match any in the US collection. Then Leicester's University Department of Genetics in the UK compared DNA extracted from Tinker's hair and they compared this with 152 cats from South Sea and Hampshire County. Now Tinker's hair didn't match any in that cat database either but the DNA from the shower curtains or from the cat hairs on the shower curtains was also compared with Tinker's hair and the scientists concluded that there was only a 1 in 100 chance that the crime scene hair hadn't come from Tinker. Now the way they explain animal DNA as opposed to human DNA statistics is quite different apparently. So when the cat hairs were analysed they were a match for David Hilda's cat. Now the police were now able to link David Hilda to the disposal and perhaps the murder of David Guy. And it turns out that the two knew each other pretty well. They were virtually neighbours and they had a sort of on and off friendly relationship but it was often violent and there were often quarrels. Both men apparently liked to have a few drinks and sometimes things got a little bit out of hand. It was said that David Hilda was the more aggressive but some people also say that David Guy was. It just sounds like two guys every now and again would get on well but then they would quarrel about things. Now David Guy, the victim, he actually lived in a camper van near David Hilda's flat and I don't think it was one of those fancy camper vans that's got all the mod cons in it because David Hilda would often let David Guy use his flat to wash up in and have a bath or a shower and they'd often share food together. They seemed to get on, when they got on, they seemed to get on well but when they didn't, they really didn't. They even actually had nicknames for each other. So David Hilda was Big Dave and he was older. I think he was about 47 at this time. And David Guy, the victim, was Little Dave. And they did all sorts of favours for each other, minding animals and whatnot. And they both had cats from what I read in some comments as well. But it was only David Hilda's cat's Tinker's hair that was found in the shower curtain. Now no one is ever going to know really what took place on that fateful day that David Guy lost his life. But some say they might have quarrelled and that might have escalated into violence because David Hilda believed that the victim, David Guy, was not caring for his cat, Tinker while he'd been away and I think because they did favours for each other that was one of the things that David or little David did in return like minded the cat and make sure it was fed and looked after while David Hilda might be away collecting scrap metal or whatnot. Anyway David Hilda was charged with the murder and manslaughter of David Guy and the trial ended up taking place a year later. And Dr John Wetton from the University of Leicester, who headed the DNA analysis, he gave evidence for the prosecution at the trial, and this was actually the first time that cat DNA had been used in a criminal trial in the UK. And now I won't go into the details of the crime, other than that David Hilda actually used his bicycle to transport the parts of David Guy's body to the disposal sites where it was later found by those students and then by police. At the end of the day David Hilda was convicted of manslaughter but not murder 
with a minimum sentence of 12 years and he'll probably be out in a couple of years from now providing he's behaved himself in prison. Now his sentence was considerably lower uh, than you would think <clears throat> if you'd read the details of this horrific crime. This was due to the fact that his defence argued that he had a a very low IQ and he actually had severe bouts of depression. When the police uh, were searching his home he'd, they thought he had actually overdosed on Nurofen and he had blackouts apparently where he thought he might take his life if what they were telling him was true so it's, it seems like he was suffering from some sort of mental illness as well. But the police said that the DNA evidence from those cat hairs found at all those various little crime scenes had actually been a major part in the investigation and solving the case. So Tinker ended up solving, or really putting the, the pieces together to solve this particular crime. And so David Guy's family were able to see justice be done. So, I don't know. Our little cats, they get everywhere, they get up to mischief, they take things, they bring them back. But it's pretty good that you can connect the dots like this and solve some crimes like that. There's a pretty famous case in Australia that uh, was solved due to dog hair evidence and it was a specific breed of dog, a Pekingese, and those dog hairs were found uh, in the murderer's car boot and there was no reason for them to be there otherwise and found on a blanket so they were able to put that together and put someone with the crime just because of those little dog hairs. So isn't it amazing what they can do nowadays. And the case that I was just referring to in Australia where they were able to match up those dog hairs, that was like 50 years ago now. So now with all the DNA work that they can do, really, I don't know if you get up to mischief, someone is going to catch you out with those little bits of hair because we all know what cat hair is like, don't we? It gets everywhere. And while I was colouring in this picture, Millie has been on it everywhere. And I'll put some pictures of her at the end where she has completely photobombed everything that I was trying to do and sat on it. And when I put some white Posca pen on this after I'd completed the picture, Millie sat on it and smudged it all. So I had to recolour one of the paws. And I don't think it looks right, but... What can you do when a cat walks all over your picture that you're colouring in <laughs> that's alcohol, ink and white acrylic paint? But if you know a little cat burglar cat, I would love to hear any tales that you might like to share of what mischief they've got up to. That's it from me. Until next time, stay safe and happy colouring.